Hi guys, welcome back to the Tennis Tactics Blueprint 2.0. In this video we're going to talk about the five different game situations. These are when serving, when receiving, when trading, when building, when finishing. But those are the different situations that are going to happen in a match over and over again. And it's very important that you recognize which situation you're in so that you can hit the appropriate shot for that situation. Obviously the serving and the receiving, you know you're serving and you're receiving, but what are you trying to actually do with that serve or with that return? It's all about creating autonomy in your mind so that you know exactly what you should be doing in that situation. That creating that switch in your mind that when someone is coming forward at you and you know where to pass them, whether to hit it low, whether to hit it high, it's very important that you have that clear plan of what you're going to do and you can execute it effectively. Let's take a look at these different situations in action. Statistics show that 75% of all points are won on serve, return and third shot. <laughs> So you can see when I get the serve out wide and Simon's out of the court, it gives me a much bigger space to aim into to hit my third shot. So you want him to feel like it's unfair. You want him to feel like this rally has now become swayed in my favor. So by serving that serve a lot, a lot wider, I give myself the best chance to hit a good third shot. Now in those situations, you can see Alex is serving, I'm receiving, so those are two characteristics of the game situation. When I'm returning, if Alex has hit a big serve, I'm going to be defending, so that's another game characteristic. And then on that first shot, Alex is either finishing or he's building for the finish. So there he's gone through serving, receiving, building, finishing, and me, I'm defending. Something that's good for you to think about is when you are returning that first serve, don't necessarily feel like you have to cut corners and go in and try and uh, take the ball on the rise or be aggressive on the shot. Simply move along where you're standing, so stand further back from the baseline, get the point started, get the ball in. That's the first thing, get the point started and then always give him, him the chance to, mi to miss in that rally. Now, when we get into a rally situation after the serve and the return, firstly, if no one has the upper hand, it's going to be in a trading situation, so let's take a look at that. There you can see we did about four or five balls in that trading situation. I've gone down the line, it wasn't good enough. I tried to build. Alex has turned almost defending into attacking. He's opened the court and then he's come in to finish off the point. Ugh. So there you can see in that point we're going through the trading, we're going through the building, trying to finish, but because we're both quite quick around the court, we're able to get back into court, defend quite well, and turn the defend back into the trading situation. So as you can see in that, in that rally, I used my slice to great effect to keep that ball low and get Simon hitting a little bit more up to give me the edge so he wasn't able to keep the shots no, as deep as he was at the beginning of the rally. So by using the slice and this change of pace, the ball sitting down a little bit lower, I was able to then take control of the rally and eventually finish the point. When we are in that trading rally situation, we want to keep the balls deep enough with enough spin and enough power so that the ball is rising to our opponent. It's not dropping. If we ever get a ball that's dropping to our opponent and they're able to step in, that straight away turns their shot not into a rally shot but into an aggressive shot, an attacking shot. So we want to keep them at neutral, we want to keep them in that rally situation. So by keeping the ball maybe a little bit more spinny so the ball's bouncing higher like Nadal does, hitting it a little bit harder perhaps. If you're hitting a, a flatter shot it has to be deeper so the ball is still rising to your opponent every time they hit, they make contact with that ball. 
So one of the ways to build a rally is with your strength. So in my case, I'm going to use my forehand. I'm going to try and control my, the middle of the court as much as I can. And I'm going to try and get the, uh, my opponent moving, my opponent running by creating angles to then give me the easier ball to finish. So you can see I was being quite patient moving Simon around, even wrong footing him there on that forehand, which is a great place sometimes for someone who runs a little bit quicker, who's quicker around the court, so they actually get back to the middle a lot faster than someone who's slow, and you can use that wrong foot tactic where they actually have to move back out to where they've just come from, making them unbalanced and uh, giving you an easier shot in return. So another great way to uh, build in a rally is to go to the opponent's weakness. So in my case, I'm going inside out to Simon's backhand. I'm waiting for the opportunity to then go inside in, cross court, make a move and hopefully set up the point that way. So in this situation, Alex is going to feed me a short ball to demonstrate our building and end up finishing. The short ball is going to be the builder. I'm going to come up to the short ball as quick as I can, try to take it on the rise and move in to try to finish with that volley. There, the builder turned into the finisher. Now, because my approach shot was good, the building shot was good, it's given me an easy ball to then just finish it off. And there, on the building shot, on the approach shot, I chose not to go for power, but to keep the ball low, so it makes it much harder for Alex to get it in my feet with that passing shot and I can come on and finish the point. So obviously the finishing would be when you're hitting that last shot. You've built the point, you've either gone for the serve, through the return, you've traded, if it might be a trading situation or if it's a good serve, it might go straight from serve to building to finishing. Now it's very important that you don't force the finishing phase of the point. If, uh, if the ball is there to be hit, certainly hit it, but make sure you're in control of the point and you're in control of what you're doing and your actions so you don't change your technique just because the ball is easier. Now this is something that we're going to cover inside the course in great depth. The different situations and what you should be doing in each situation. So that was video number two. Make sure you check your inbox in the coming days for video number three. In video number three we're going to talk about the six tactical pillars. Now these are all the game situations and all the th considerations that should be taken into account when playing a match. So have a look at the video number three for that. That will be released in the coming days. Also leave a comment underneath. Let us know what you think about different situations and which situation you struggle with the most when you're playing a tennis match.